to address those today. Uh, with that, my name is Mike Holmberg. I'm the Associate Brand Manager for the Ignition Division, um, and I'm going to be today's moderator for the webinar, uh, and I'm going to be introducing Rachel. Uh, so with that, thank you for joining the webinar today put on by Ignition. It's called Five Tips to Reduce Fertilizer, Not Yield. Uh, presenting today will be Rachel Rats, who is a soil microbiologist for Ignition. Uh, Rachel got her undergrad from Southwest Minnesota State University uh, with majors in environmental science and biology. Uh, later went on to S SDSU in Brookings uh, to get her master's degree in soil microbiology. Uh, so really a wealth of knowledge uh, in Rachel here that we have presenting. Uh, she's been with Ignition for eight years in various roles uh, with R&D, regulatory, and, and technical support as well. So uh, with that, I want to thank Rachel for joining us today and turn it over to her. All right. Hi, everyone. And like Mike said, uh, today we get to talk about fertilizer reduction. I'm Rachel Rath, so a microbiologist here with Relco Ignition. And we are going to talk about five tips to cut fertilizer, not yield. All right, so the reason we are talking about this today is due to the increase in prices of fertilizer. They're actually the highest they've been since 2008, as well as the low supply. This is probably something that you all have dealt with uh, recently and are expecting to deal with in the next year. And there's a lot of reasons why, uh, why prices are increasing and supply is low. Um, a few of those are the increases in natural gas prices. So as, as natural gas prices go up, that correlates with an increase in fertilizer prices, as well as the energy issue, especially in China, um, they aren't able to kind of keep all of their fertilizer plants open at the same time due to a lack of energy. And that's the number one export of nitrogen fertilizer. Refinery restrictions with COVID, we've seen a lot of um, shortages of supplies and workers. Sanctions, um, they've, the U.S. Have act, has put sanctions on phosphorus fertilizer coming in from Russia and Morocco. Transportation issues. Um, a lot of us have come across this, not just in fertilizer, but you know, trying to get fertilizer into the U.S. and around the U.S. are extremely more expensive now than they were in the past. And finally, is the extreme weather. We actually have had quite a few extreme weather events this year, but specifically, Ida in the Gulf has um, shut down a lot of fertilizer plants, specifically actually the largest one in the world was shut down due to Ida, which obviously increases prices and decreases the supply. So this is kind of what, as farmers, you're running up against this year and um, in 2022. So with that, um, what the question that we have at hand this year will be, how much fertilizer should I add? And you even could say, how much fertilizer will I be able to add? or can I more efficiently utilize the native microbes in the soil to get more out of my fertilizer? So with that question at hand, we come to the five tips. So Ignition has pulled together tips that we have kind of tested and proven over the years. And those are utilize the nutrients that are already in your soil, wake up the microbes, turbocharge the microbial activity in your soil, keep it close, keep those nutrients and fertilizer close to the roots. And then lastly is focus on the chemistry. So let's dive right in. So this first one is uh, utilize the nutrients that are already in your soil. So um, NPK, we actually have quite a bit of NPK in our soils already. However, if you look at nitrogen specifically, they say 95 to 98% of the nitrogen in the soil is not in a form that's available to the plant. And then um, looking at phosphorus, they have said, and I've actually run these numbers myself, and it comes out to around 100, 100 years. They say based on how much uh, phosphorus fertilizer is, or phosphorus nutrition is in the soil, you actually have enough there to last um, for your crops for a hundred years. However, most all of that phosphorus is not in a form that's actually available to the plant. And that's why there's enough there, but um, we aren't utilizing it all right now. And uh, beyond just the phosphorus that's naturally in our soil, they also say that 70 to 90% of the phosphorus fertilizer that you apply won't even be able to be utilized in that first year of cropping. And that's because 
just like the natural phosphorus that gets tied up with other minerals and soil particles. And lastly is potassium, pretty similar story, you know, 90 to 98% of that potassium in the soil is not in a form that's available. A lot of the times, uh, like the nitrogen, I think only 2% of nitrogen in the soil is not in that organic form. And when it's in that organic form, we have to release it and make it available. So understanding we do have a lot of nutrients and PK in our soil. We just have to put it in a form that the plant can utilize. And that brings us to tip number two. So wake up the microbes. Um, around 20 to 80% of microbes in the soil are actually in a dormant form, uh, which is um, unfortunate because microbes bring a lot of benefits to the plant. So if we can wake up these microbes, make them more active, we're going to get all these benefits from them. There's a lot of reasons why the microbes might not be active, whether it's available carbon, um, amount of water, temperature, pH, micro, macronutrients, all of these things will determine if the microbes in your soil will be awake. And if the conditions aren't ideal, they can go dormant. And they go dormant in a lot of different um, ways and use a lot of different mechanisms, but understanding that when they don't have the needed environment or the needed nutrients that they have to be active, one of the first things they do is they stop creating enzymes because that's a very energy intensive process. So if they aren't creating these enzymes, they will stop breaking down nutrients, making it available to the plant. So we really need to wake up those microbes in the soil. Um, you need to jumpstart your soil and plant health to help reactivate many of these dormant microbes. And that's, we really need to focus on plant and soil health as a whole because they actually help wake up, wake up those microbes in your soil. The third is turbocharge the microbial activity. Like I said, we really want to make sure the microbes aren't dormant because they bring a lot of benefits to the plant. So the number one thing that we're talking about today is this first point, soil microbes unlock nutrients that would otherwise remain tied up in your soil. And that's really this whole thought process behind mineralization. That's really a large word to say microbes can break down organic matter and release nutrients. That's kind of the whole thought of today's webinar. But there's a lot of additional benefits that microbes bring like phosphorus solubilization, um, microbes can release organic acids to bring that pH down a little bit to release phosphorus that's tied up to calcium. Um, nitrogen fixation. This is a way that microbes not only are um, mineralizing organic matter in the soil and releasing nitrogen that way, they actually can fix nitrogen from the atmosphere. About 78% of the atmosphere is made up of nitrogen and plants can't utilize any of that because it's in a form it can't use. So microbes are actually able to take that nitrogen and put it in a form that is fertilizer for the plant to use. So not only do microbes um, release nutrients from the soil, also from the atmosphere. And then also biofilms and um, glomalin are used to help the microbes uh, increase the soil structure. So it holds in more water, holds in more nutrients, so even when you are applying your fertilizer, it's not being washed away. Antibiotics, microbes actually create antibiotics, which help deter pathogens so the plant doesn't have that stress on it. And then lastly is plant hormones. It's pretty crazy to think that microbes are actually creating plant hormones that aren't necessarily there to alter the growth of the microbe itself, but they can actually alter the growth of plants and help increase plant growth. So that was tip number three. Diving into tip number four, I really like this tip because it's not one that we typically think of a lot of the times, and it's really uh, focusing on this holistic approach. So using less fertilizer by keeping it close to the root. So you can do that in um, different mechanisms, whether it's how you apply your fertilizer, but understanding that we can do this on the microbial level as well. So a lot of the times people think about um, they'll find a lot of benefits that one microbe can bring, and they'll just put a lot of that one microbe in as an inoculant. But what we don't, um, what we aren't doing in that instance is creating diversity, and diversity is key. So if you see all of these different layers of microbes here, we really need all of these to cycle the nutrients properly. Um, you can see here in the table that bacteria have a C to N, so that's carbon to nitrogen ratio. So they need five carbons to one nitrogen, whereas protozoa 
need a lot less nitrogen. So they take 30 carbons to one nitrogen. So plants are in the soil, they can't move, but they're releasing these exudates. It's basically like carbon. And these bacteria are drawn to that. There's a lot of carbon and nitrogen in that. So they're coming in, consuming organic matter on their way to the root zone, that rhizosphere where all this activity is happening. And they're consuming organic matter, taking in five carbons and one nitrogen, but then protozoa actually eat bacteria. So these bacteria are coming in and they're actually tying up a lot of that nitrogen. So it's it's not in a form the plant can utilize because it's within the, the bacteria cell walls. So when these protozoa come in and consume the bacteria, if they if the protozoa consumes six bacteria, they only need one of those nitrogen and they're actually going to release that organic nitrogen to the plant as fertilizer, as ammonia. So they'll release five nitrogens to the plant. So you can see how that ratio of C to N really is important to understand we need a lot of diverse microbes. We can't just have a lot of bacteria or a lot of fungi or protozoa. We really need the whole approach. All right, and the last is focus on the chemistry. So first, before we focus on the chemistry, I wanna focus on the biology of this, understanding enzymes. So um, this is kind of an illustration of an enzyme. There's many enzymes that don't necessarily need what you see here, cofactor, but a lot of these enzymes need what is called a cofactor. It's this yellow portion here. And this yellow portion creates the perfect fit, the perfect structure. It's kind of unlocking that enzyme, making it um, possible to do what it was intended to do. If this cofactor wasn't here, these side of nutrients will come in, hit this enzyme, bounce off, and never break down because it doesn't have that perfect fit. A lot of cofactors are actually trace minerals, so like a micronutrient. So it's pretty interesting to think that um, a lot of the times we need micronutrients as cofactors to release and make available macronutrients like NP and K. So we need to make sure, kind of like we need that, that diversity in the microbes, we need that in our chemistry as well. So Cofactors unlock enzymes to help break down um, organic matter, tied up nutrients, and make it available to the plant. And that's really what this, um, what the chemistry side of it is. We need to focus on the chemistry of these cofactors or uh, micronutrients that we're putting in the soil. So you can see here on the top is a large synthetic compound or structure. And on the bottom is an illustration of an organic compound. And you can see these little microbes trying to access that cofactor. And which one of these do you think is easier for that microbe to actually get that cofactor out of this compound and then able to put it into an enzyme? It's really this um, bottom structure that makes it more available for the plant. Um, so really, the quicker the plant and microbe can access the chemistry, the quicker they are able to utilize it for food, fuel, and cofactors to speed up these enzymatic processes. So we need to make sure that we aren't putting these large synthetic compounds in the soil that might, you know, that structure might be soluble and might be stable in solution, but it's not available to that microbe. And if, if that cofactor is not available to the microbe, we aren't going to get the available MPK because we won't have that enzymatic activity. So chemistry that is available to microbes is key to create fully functioning enzymes that break down tied up nutrients and really focusing on um, that available side. You know, soluble does not always equal plant and microbe available. We need to remember that, that the availability aspect is key. All right, so let's, let's dive back into that question that we started with. And this is a question um, all farmers are faced with every year, but especially this year is, how much fertilizer should I add and um, or can I more efficiently utilize the native microbes in the soil to get more on my fertilizer? I hope after we went through those five tips, you're kind of leaning more towards uh, that right path. And that's something that Ignition has really keyed into. You know, since the beginning of Ignition, we have focused on how can we use the microbes, the microbes that are already in the soil to more efficiently utilize what's in the soil as well as the inputs that are put into the soil. So we've uh, created a technology that we'll dive into, but we've done a lot of research on that technology of the modes of actions, but also to understand how can we reduce fertilizer and still get the same yield or the same ROI or better. 
Um, so that's something that we've done for the past several years. And this year, it's really uh, coming to fruition. So this is our technology that we've created based on this mindset of using the native system. It's called microbial catalyst technology. It's a two-part patented process. It's really right there in the name what it is. We're focusing on both the microbial side of things and the enz enzymatic side of things. So catalyzing those enzymatic reactions. So to kind of look at these two parts separately, how are we, or what are we seeing on that microbial side of things? So Ignition has done research into the mode of action of this technology and really looking at how are we activating these microbes. Um, if you think back to those five tips, you know, we, we talked about waking up the microbes. The more microbes you have, the more benefit you're going to have. And this is called a PLFA test, a phospholipid fatty acid analysis. And what that really means is we're looking at key structures and microbes in soil. So we applied microbial catalyst um, to a plant, to that soil, and then sampled the microbes in the soil to see what the difference between microbial catalyst treated versus non-treated was. And this first row here is uh, the total biomass. So we actually saw an 18% increase in the total biomass of microbes in the soil. That's, that's that population. So we were able to increase the population of the microbes as well as a 10% increase in the diversity. So if you think about wake up your microbes and keep the nutrients close to that root zone by increasing diversity, we were able to see both of these features um, due to utilizing microbial catalyst. And then if you think about that, the activity side of the microbes, we were able to not just measure how many microbes are in the soil or what kind of microbes, we actually can measure how active they are. And that's through this, um, what's called a Haney the Haney test. And if you think about, um, if you go to the gym or you go for a run and you're working out, you know, you're, you're doing a lot of work, a lot of activity, you breathe more. So the more you breathe, the more activity you're doing. And we can measure the same thing with microbes with this uh, Solvita one day CO2 burst. So this is really looking at how active the microbes are by how, how much they're breathing, how much work they're doing. And we were able to see almost a 22% increase and how active the microbes are in the soil due to utilizing microbial catalyst technology. So that's that first part, that's that microbial, you know, we're able to see that, that we're able to increase the microbial population, diversity, and activity, which is key um, to having overall plant health, not just one of those features. And then the second part is this enzyme catalyst side of things. So if you remember, you saw this picture earlier, and this yellow um, cofactor that we saw earlier actually is microbial catalyst. So microbial catalyst is being utilized as a cofactor to help unlock these enzymes, make them function the way that they properly are supposed to. So microbial catalyst acts as a cofactor to help increase nutrient uptake and we've actually done several tissue samples. So this is an example of a corn tissue sample that we've done and seen increases in micronutrients, but also that NPK you see there. So we, we were able to increase the amount of NPK in the plant in that tissue sample due to unlocking these enzymes by providing that cofactor and making the enzyme function and work the way it should. Um, we've, done, you know, we've done university research at SMSU to kind of key in on one specific cofactor. So if you look at that plant cell structure in the corner there, um, the majority or the largest portion of plant cell walls is cellulose. So the cellulase enzyme, when that breaks down plant material, it releases the NPK for the new crop to be able to take in. And we were able to show based on an increased rate of microbial catalyst, we saw an increased rate of this cellulase enzyme. So the more active this cellulase is, the more that plant material will break down. You can think of that as organic matter, ultimately releasing more MPK to the plant. So that's the quick version of microbial catalyst technology looking both at, we can see an increase in microbial um, activity as well as enzymatic activity. So now what um, I think is the most exciting or maybe more, more important to you guys is showing you how we can reduce fertilizer in a lot of our research trials and still keep that yield and that ROI. So first let's look at this starter trial. So 
This is a trial that was done over two years on five different fields, so 10 locations total. And this is actually comparing starter, so five gallons of starter versus no starter at all, completely replacing the starter with generate. So if we just look at this at an economic glance for inputs, it's actually cheaper to use generate than it is to use starter. So you can see there is a $10 um, gain per acre just by switching to generate alone. And then you can see in this photo, there are a lot of plant health uh, photos and measurements that we took throughout the year. So it's not just an economic benefit up front, but a benefit to the plant health. And then at the, at the end, it's also a benefit to the yield and the ROI. So eight out of 10 trials had an increase on yield and nine out of 10 had an increase on ROI. So that on average was a 3.55 bushel per acre gain and a 3.4 to one return on investment. So um, down here in this table, you can see that uh, starter alone, we had a $10 uh, per acre gain. And then the yield with having that 3.55 bush bushel per acre yield gain, we actually had a $17.75 gain ultimately resulting in $27.75 uh, dollar advantage per acre by completely getting rid of starter and utilizing generate. All right, so now looking at a corn on corn strip trial. So this is repeated twice in a, in a field looking at 100% um, rate of fertilizer, and this is fertilizer, 100% rate versus 75%. So we took out 25% of the fertilizer and you can see here that both the 75% rate of generate and the 100% had an increase on yield. So if we compare, if you just, if you kept your fertilizer exactly the same in this trial and then added generate, we had a 4.7 to one ROI. So um, based on a 9.4 bushel per acre gain and the input um, cost, we had a 4.7 to one ROI. And then if you chose to reduce your fertilizer, so if you chose to reduce by 25% and you had a 7.45 bushel per acre gain here, we actually had an eight to one return on investment. So looking at that input cost and the yield that you get from it, we had an eight point or an eight to one return on investment. So this is corn on corn rotation. We also did a corn on soy rotation. Um, you can see the trend changes a little bit, but that thought process is still there. This is also replicated twice with the same treatments. And if we do that same mindset, if you keep that fertilizer rate the same and then um, compare with and without generate, we had a 4.1 bushel per acre gain, and that's a 1.5 to one ROI change. So the in input, cost wasn't difference, but we had an increase in the, um, I should say the fertilizer input cost wasn't difference, but we had an increase in the bushel per acre gain. And then if you chose to uh, reduce your fertilizer, you can see here that reducing fertilizer by 25% and keeping generate, you got about the same um, yield as the 100% rate. But if you think about the reduction in investment, you actually had a 3.4 to one return on investment by reducing your fertilizer and utilizing generate. So we, we did that both on a corn and corn and corn on soy uh, rotation to try it out on both. And then this last trial I have here is actually utilizing microbial catalysts in our seed treatment form. So commence generate is a foliar or in furrow product that we just talked about and commence for wheat is a seed treatment forms, both of them utilizing microbial catalyst technology. And this is research that was actually done in Romania uh, by the National Agriculture Research and Development Institute. So similar concept here is what, what was done with those strip trials. Um, so you have 100% right here. And then this is actually um, a 66.6, .6, or we'll say a 67% rate of fertilizer here. And once again, if we look at if you just keep your 100% rate and use generate because you know some producers might not want to cut their fertilizer, but just utilize, sorry, commence in this one. Um, there was a 9.8 bushel per acre gain and a protein gain here. And that's a 16.5 to one return on investment. Or if you um, cut your fertilizer, so you used a 67% rate of fertilizer, 
um, compared to 100%, we still had a return on investment of 7.5 to 1 ROI. So this is utilizing our seed treatment, the others were utilizing our generate product. Once again, we saw a lot of great in-season health benefits. This is something Ignition does a lot as we, we take photos throughout the whole growing season. And just to be able to visually see these changes throughout the year um, is a great way to kind of show how increasing that microbial activity in your soil can increase the health of the soil and the plant. All right, so that was kind of a lot, but in summary, if, if we wanna break this down into kind of a, a quick little version, looking at the five tips we talked about. So ultimately understanding there's a lot of nutrients that are in your soil, um, whether it's just native nutrients from organic matter or carryover fertilizer from previous years, um, that nutrients is in your soil. And what we need to do is we need to wake up those microbes that are there. And we need to turbo turbocharge them. So turn on that activity, get them working for you, get them bringing all those benefits that microbes have. Um, and then we need to increase that diversity of the microbes in the soil. We can't just focus on one beneficial microbe, but we need to look at that holistic approach. So then we get that right cycling. If you actually don't have the right um, diversity or that right cycling, you will actually tie up your nutrients in your soil rather than make them available. And then lastly is focus on that chemistry. Make sure that the um, nutrients that you are applying and or that chemistry that you're applying is in a form that's available to the microbes and to the plant. So microbial catalyst technology is the technology that we've researched for years to help with this process, to help with all five of these tips. So um, microbial catalyst increases microbial and enzymatic activity to help release those nutrients that are tied up by working with the microbes and the enzymes to make it available for the plant. And then lastly, um, really, if, if you don't remember any of the, the mode of action research behind microbial catalyst, this is really the takeaway, the takeaway message for it. Ultimately, we're stimulating the microbes to um, stimulating the microbes and the enzymes in the soil, which liberates nutrients. It makes the nutrients available for the plant to take in. That increases your plant health throughout the year. And at the end of the year, that increases yield, which ultimately that means you're increasing profits uh, to the producer. That's kind of the bottom line that we're looking for. So Microbial Catalyst powers all of our, all of our products at Ignition. So we have Generate. This is more of our broad approach product. It can be used on many different crops, foliar and in furrow. Um, and what it's doing is exactly what we talked about, uh, releasing those nutrients, making them available for the plant. Commences our seed treatment line. We have a seed treatment for wheat, corn, and soy, and it's really doing that activity and putting it right in that seed zone to help with germination and plant health throughout the growing season. Procure actually takes microbial catalyst into kind of a specialized appro approach. So we can look at specific enzymes, um, specifically in photosynthesis and nitrogen fixation and nodulation to try and help activate those enzymes, give them the cofactors that are needed to function properly. And then Anchor is our hay and silage pre preservative line. All right, so that is um, kind of all of the research uh, that we wanted to share with you today. We have a lot more and Ignition really has been focusing on using the native nutrients and microbes since the very beginning of Ignition. This has been kind of what our focus has been on. And now this is something that is needed every year, but this year more than ever, we need to, um, what our focus is on is to help producers decrease their input cost and still get that yield and that ROI. Um, that return that they're that they're looking for. So if you guys have any questions, um, like Mike said, feel free to put them in the comments today. We can talk through some of those. But also if you have any future comments or questions, please feel free to reach out, email or call us. And I'll hey, turn it hey. back over to you, Mike. Yes, thank you. That was excellent. So really appreciate the content. Did have a few questions come through here. I'm gonna kind of try and summarize them and, and just really ask them in a in a concise way here. Um, so I guess just to start out, um, a lot of the trials you went through showed either a 25 or 33% reduction. Uh, what if you did something more dramatic than that? Uh, what, what would you expect to see? 
Sure. Yeah, I guess that's one thing that at Ignition, you know, we we don't necessarily, we aren't selling fertilizer. We're really focusing on the soil and the plant health. So um, not being the agronomist, I'm I'm never the one to tell a producer what rate that they should reduce at. Um, we, that is what we look at, you know, that is what we do in our research trials. We've looked at a 30% reduction. Like I showed earlier, we've looked at reduce completely taking out starter. So we've looked at a lot of different rates. Um, at the end of the day, you know, I, I would say we can't completely get rid of fertilizer year after year. Um, because like looking at that phosphorus, you know, we have a hundred years, if you could make all of that phosphorus available, but we do need to, um, as we pull nutrients out, we still need to put some nutrients in. So the good thing about microbial catalyst is it not only helps you utilize what's already there, it actually makes what you're putting in more efficient. So some of the research we did in the past when we weren't in the same state we are at now, we actually looked at increasing fertilizer rates and we actually still saw that microbial catalyst could help with that return on investment with an increase, you, making that more efficient. So um, whether, you know, to I don't want to give you a rate to reduce your fertilizer at, but um, we do need nutrients and microbial catalyst has, has helped make that more efficient. Great, yeah, I think that was really helpful. Really, uh, I'll summarize briefly, Rachel, just really, um, we're not, uh, we're changing the efficiency at which you can get nutrients out of the bank. Uh, we're not actually adding anything to that to that overall bank. So might work yeah, one year to reduce totally, but maybe it wouldn't work for 10 or 15 years. So um, yeah, thanks for that. Um, another question that I had come through here, um, I've heard a lot about biologicals in the marketplace. Is there anything live in your product? That's a great question that we actually get a lot. Um, our all of our products generate, commence, procure our anchor. Well, generate, commence, and procure. We we don't have any microbes in those products, or we don't have any biologics at all in them. So what we're doing is, um, and the reason behind that is, like I said before, we really, really want to focus on that holistic approach. We want to increase the diversity, so we don't necessarily just want to put one microbe in. Um, we, we really want to work with what's there. So with the PLFA and the Haney test, we were able to show that we increased um, population diversity and activity of the microbes that were actually already in your soil. So um, just like we have our own microbiome, you know, the plants and the microbes in the soil, they're constantly communicating and working back and forth. So we want to work with kind of what the plant has already selected for its microbiome in that rhizosphere. Um, so we're actually working with the microbes that are natively in the soil. Perfect. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, a couple other questions that came in the chat here. Um, I, I think I'll take the first one actually as, as the hay guy here. Um, the question was about a product for hay ground. I'll briefly answer that. Um, we do have quite a bit of research using Generate on um, alfalfa or other hay crops, uh, really helping to increase quantity and quality of, of that crop. Uh, so that's something I can follow up with you uh, later on. Uh, the anchor for hay product is another product that helps really preserve quality after the crop is grown. So we do have a few options for hay, and that's a, a great conversation we can have later. Um, and then I think really just the last question, Rachel, before we, we, uh, we wrap it up here. Um, looks like there's two questions that are really about reducing fertilizer in crops other than corn or soy, uh, like things like oats or other sorts of things. Um, and so just kind of briefly or broadly put the question out, do we have research on percentages and other crops beyond just corn and soy? Sure. Yeah, that's a great question. And that's something that Ignition actually has really been diving into deeper in the last uh, couple of years is looking at a lot of those high value crops. So so we do have uh, research, I uh, think I showed that wheat one, but then we do have research in like sugar beets. And a, a lot of the times what we're doing recently is looking at high value crops. We have two state of the art greenhouses that were constant, they're constantly full that we, you know, never have enough space to get all of our research through. Um, and recently we are looking at a lot of high value crops and we are actually in 20 some different countries around the world that is kind of the drive for that. So we get a lot of research. We've gotten grapes and uh, potatoes and 
Mike, you can list off probably a million there. There's a lot of different crops. Some of them I've never even heard of um, that we're getting results from with our international researchers um, that they're actually doing the same thing. You know, this, this issue isn't just domestically, but it's kind of worldwide right now of this increase in fertilizer costs and decrease in, so, in supply. So a lot of our international researchers recently have been sending us research that they're doing to reduce fertilizer and utilize microbial catalysts as well. Great, yeah, thank you for that. So just, I think just a, another question came through here as we were wrapping up, but uh, we wouldn't necessarily have like a percent for every crop. And I think you had said earlier that you don't wanna give anyone a percent. It's really more about helping to improve ROI if I could summarize that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A lot of it is based on economics. You know, as you as a producer, you can look at, say, say you wanted to um, utilize the same input cost as last year. So reducing that amount of fertilizer to try to keep that same input cost, you know, it's more of a question of how much fertilizer do you have to or would you like to reduce this year? And then uh, microbial catalyst, our products here at Ignition can help you uh, get that return, get that yield and that return that you're hoping for. Awesome. Hey, thank you, Rachel. Really appreciate your time and your knowledge today. Uh, thanks for everyone who joined and uh, participated in the chat here. Um, and I want to just thank you all for your time. So with that, have a great day. Thanks.